Plans to deploy truth squads in three of the earliest voting states to mitigate the effects of recent attacks against him. Now, one of the attacks was done by Jeb Bush, who made fun of uh, Rubio's height, which is, you know, completely ridiculous. But uh, I guess he's concerned, Rubio is, that people just won't get him. It reminds me of the Obama truth squad we saw just a few years ago. And here's a look at that. We want to keep this campaign focused on issues. We don't want people to get distracted, and Missourians don't want to be distracted by these divisive character attacks. So we're here to respond to any character attacks, to set the record straight. Whether it is uh, directly attributable to the campaign or to one of the soft money operations, if they're not going to tell the truth, then somebody's got to step up and say, wait a minute, that's not true, this is the truth. And I wish we had a truth squad today that went around telling people about all Barack Obama's empty campaign promises. You guys recall when he told the woman that he would buy her a house and she wouldn't have to work anymore. And then filmmaker Joel Gilbert talked to her years later and said, hey, did you ever get that house? She's like, no, I didn't get that house. Of course she didn't get the house. You know, he said, uh, I'm not gonna increase your taxes. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. On and on and on, you know, raising the debt limit does not raise the debt, which I guess is technically true. It just allows for the debt to be raised. but. That's neither here nor there. Let's go on to our final story for the evening before we go on to more special reports. Uh, keep in mind that we have Louis Farrakhan, the exclusive interview that you will not see anyplace else, as well as David Knight's breakdown of the latest shenanigans at the BLM. Now, you guys recall the Flint water crisis in Flint, Michigan, and now the governor has come out and apologized for this, and he has some things to say. He said, I'm sorry, and I will fix it, Snyder said near the opening of his 50-minute speech directly addressing the residents of Flint. You did not create this crisis and you did not you do not deserve this. Now, many people have come out and spoken out about this. We've seen National Guard uh, giving people bottled water on the scene. So, yes, it is a big deal. And actually, we have Leanne McAdoo, who's out on the scene. You guys stay tuned for all those special reports she will be filing as she's trying to get to the bottom of the situation and talk to the residents right there in Flint, Michigan. Now, stay tuned. We'll be back right after this break with David's breakdown of the BLM in the exclusive interview with Louis Farrakhan. You traitors claiming I'm a Ruski agent, say it to my face and I'll break your nose. I'm sick of it. I will stomp your head in the ground, you traitorous maggots. While we go under Obamacare, North American Union, conquered by European banks, announcing our kids don't belong to us, total bondage, total surveillance, and you want to shoot your mouth off about me being a Ruski agent, I will stomp your head in the ground. Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Oh, I, will, oh, I wish we'd go back to the days. I'm telling you, of just getting my satisfaction out in the street. You pick a sword or something else, you're going out in the street. I'm not kidding, you cowardly scum. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all in InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. I have some amazing news, as Alex has been telling you, a uh, retirement party uh, a few years ago. And we have the uh, article up on InfoWars.com uh, by Don Salazar that's, uh, I think it's gone. Uh, gone live now, but it's going to be coming up if it's not up there. Basically, what they're talking about is they're celebrating this lady they call the Acquisition Queen. They brag about all the land that she's taken, how much land she has taken for, and I'm not sure if it's the Park Service or the BLM. Look, they all work for the Department of Interior. They all work for the federal government. The BLM has uh, different parts of its organization, some of them that uh, confiscate land, some of them that... Uh, supposedly manage land. Uh, that, that's questionable as we see this. Okay, now let's get to this uh, clip of the BLM stuff. This is coming from uh, a lady, uh, Serena Catania, I think is the way to pronounce her name. She has a Sustaining America channel. Uh, we, we were sent this clip, a couple of different people sent this to us. I want to try to get her on. She's got a website, sustainingamerica.com. Talk to her a little bit more about the background of this. And of course, if you go to her uh, YouTube channel, go to her website, uh, her website, you'll see some other very heartbreaking videos about people who built their dream home, wanted to retire close to a natural a national park, and the national park comes in and takes their land. Uh, and this one video that she has, the lady says uh, they had just built their dream home. They were uh, working on this, and, and they were going to confiscate all of it. She asked them, well, what are you going to do with the home? They said, well, you know, some of the nicer ones like yours, uh, we won't tear down. We'll have park employees move into them. And it's like, oh, okay. So it's okay for the government bureaucrats to live in these homes. It's, it's not an impact on the sustainability of the environment if a park employee or a federal employee steals this from you and lives in it, but you can't stay there. That's, that's the reality that we live with, okay? So, yeah, there's some heart-wrenching other videos that she has. Uh, she's gone around doing interviews with people. We're going to do the same thing here at InfoWars because we have to understand what this is about. This isn't just coming about the ranchers or the miners uh, or the loggers, okay? They're coming after people with homes in the suburbs. And if you don't understand that these people have rights as well, you're going to lose your home as well. When you look at these massive forest fires that are happening on government land, it is because of a policy that 
puts a priority on locking people out of the land. It used to be they would allow people to come in and cut deadwood, standing deadwood, falling deadwood. Okay, that was what would keep the forest fires down by letting standing deadwoods re, uh, dead trees remain by letting them remain on the ground after they've fallen without letting anybody pull these things out that is causing massive devastation as we talked about when we talked about the the situation with the Hammond family uh, here was a situation where that year in Oregon three and a half million acres burned from wildfires they tried to stop a wildfire that was going to destroy their property. They did a backfire to stop it. 139 acres burned. And for that, the BLM called them arsonist and prosecuted them as terrorists. And by the way, the, uh, the uh, bureaucrat who did this, the um, prosecuting attorney who pushed that, has some pretty massive personal problems. She wound up having to resign, said she was suffering from PTSD. I don't know if she was a vet or if that was just the warfare she's conducting on the American people. Let me play this clip for you real quickly, give you a taste of this. But I did have a letter here from the Washington office. Uh, and what it says in the letter to Mary is thank you for all of your support. And Mary has, and Dick, they have supported Lands. Lands isn't always supported because we're the bad, the bad guys. We come in and we take this land, and we always take it for less than it's worth. Yeah. Um, there you go. Always less than it's worth. And I still worth. talk to Washington and keep telling them you need more. You need more staff. Yeah, they come um, in, they take this land, they always take it for less than it's worth. So here's an example from the same lady at the same party where they're going to brag about the fact that there was a, a mine that they wanted to take. They said they estimated it was $40 million. They eventually get it for $2.5 million, okay? So maybe about 5% of the real value of the property. And she brags about the fact that she took it from two little old guys that were in World War II. Absolutely merciless theft. Let's play that clip. You know, we'd sit there and wonder, why are we here? <laughs> yeah, why are you here? Um, that Thieves. We weren't back too long, and Dick calls and said, we need to have a meeting. Uh, there's a mine I want to acquire. I want to acquire this mine. So, okay. Yeah, this one. And so we had this meeting, and I'm sitting there. Is that for Harry Reid? There, too. And, well, what's the value? Do you have an idea what the value of this mine is? Yeah, around $40 million. <laughs> Well, I came from D.C., lands, and... I knew how much money was in the bank. I forget how long it took us to acquire it. Forever. It did take forever. Yeah, we don't have enough money. Let's just steal it. We went out to the uh, mine, and the owners were two little guys that had been in the Second World War. This mine was in operation in the 40s. Yeah, so and, screw them. And uh, you have to do you can a get away with it. title. They're old guys. It Take advantage of them. I swear it was. And Ralph Meinhan, our attorney's going like this. We didn't know what to do. We called everybody in the country. Nobody knew what to do. Nobody wanted to touch it. But anyway, we did get it appraised, and we did acquire for $2.5 million, which I stole the money from Washington. Yeah, great. She stole the money from Washington, and she got it for $2.5 million, a little bit... Uh, just a little bit over 5% of what they had appraised it as. Yeah, you're the bad guys. You come in and you take our land and you take it for less than it's worth. That's the reality of it. Let's play this next clip. This is where they refer to her as the acquisition queen. And this is the celebration again of this lady who's retiring from uh, working at the Mojave Preserve. They're going to talk about how much land this acquisition queen has stolen and then they're going to look forward to what she's going to do at her next position in California. Let's play that clip. Up on the wall, and I don't know whether you can see them or not, <coughs> are three red numbers. Some pretty big ones and one small one. And uh, I don't know how to do this, but I guess we'll go start with the big one, 111,500. So he's playing a little game. He's having the people guess. What is this? Under the acquisition queen's regime. Yeah. <laughs> 111,550 acres under the acquisition queen regime. Oh, applause. Isn't that great? We love that. She acquired 111,000 acres. 1,372.36. What's that number? Okay, how about the next number? It's the private acreage in Lassie. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Let me get this up. This is radio. 
Okay, so the two numbers up, one is 5.66, the other is 106 some odd.